When I was 16, cars meant one thing to me. Freedom. My dad got a new car, so I inherited his old one. The hole in the floor earned my car the nickname, the Flintstone Mobile. And when the driver's side door wouldn't open, I took it to get it fixed. Of course, I had no money, so my local bossies had to. I didn't know it until about 25 years later, but there in front of me, fixing my car, was my future husband and father of my daughter, Isabella. I also didn't know that cars would become such an integral part of my life. I've learned more about cars than I ever thought I would, or ever really wanted to for that matter. I started paying more attention to car names. Sure, I noticed them before, but I never really cared. The only thing that ever mattered to me when selecting a car of choice was the color and the radio. My husband likes his Chevys, especially his 58 Impala. My dad has a newer Impala. My favorite car name is the Intrepid. However, it's not my favorite car. You might be surprised at how much cars impact the world. Look at car names, for example. I guess a lot of people buy cars because of the name. Maybe they feel hip or edgy. Maybe they're trying to recapture their youth or just relish in the fact that they are young and carefree. Don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure that writing names for cars involves making a good amount of money. there are street signs. We read them every day. Think backward at the writing and planning that went before them. From the name, to the plans for where the sign is placed, to the, to the plumbing that is underneath, to written bids that get submitted to earn the job of building the streets, to the contractors behind the bids, to the plans to lay out a city, and so on. It's just so involved. Cars. Last summer, we sold an Oldsmobile and bought a Mustang. My husband had restored the old and really didn't want to sell it. Me? I had to write a for sale ad for the olds. That took some reading since I'd never sold a car in that way before. I had to figure out the correct form so we could get top dollar. My husband and I had our first date in that world, but we sold it. We both read hundreds of ads for Mustangs and the Mustang ads were usually well written. I say that because whenever we went to look at one, they were always in much worse shape than the ad made them appear. We spent ample time looking at rotted out hunks of metal. We did finally find one, and to my surprise, I actually enjoyed driving it last summer. This summer, it's under construction. I've read more rotten custom magazines than I can count, just because they're usually sitting on the table and I can't help picking them up and reading them. I read an article about a pink Mustang that used to be sunny in shares that was sold for $145,000. I bought Isabella a 164th replica of that same car. My dad and I have read many eco-friendly articles about cars. Most of our conversations revolved around popular science magazines. We've talked for hours about fuel cells and how they work. My dad sketched the little diagrams and attempted to explain the perks and the drawbacks of the different types of cars. But that doesn't really touch the surface. Cars eat big money. And not just buying and selling cars. People create all sorts of products related to cars. And all these products and ads require writing. There are clothes, hats, Pedal cars, bar stools, garbage pails, toolboxes, business cards, kids' bank. Matchbox cars, ramps, racetracks, keychains, car parts. Mirrors, stereos, speakers. Go karts. Brochures, owner's manuals, recall letters, newspaper ads, and articles. 
toys, advertisements, license plates, cleaning products, paint, pinstriping. And don't forget TV commercials. Come up with a great idea for one of those and you'll be able to live on the residuals for a long time. But in my world, cars mean long weekends at the Nationals with my family, looking at the craft of designing and creating an original concept. They mean walking together and talking together. They mean 50s music. They mean driving to get ice cream or just taking a drive. They mean reading how-tos about chopping cars without any clue as to when I could use that information. They mean obsessing over toy replicas for Isabella. And they mean hours of time looking at misleading ads for Mustangs. But mostly they mean my two-year-old baby showing her connection with her father. So I take my place in the passenger seat and off we go, enjoying the journey. Where's the light in the purple car?